Welcome. You are about to listen to a destiny-changing message preached by Pastor David at Caris Phase 2. Caris Phase 2 is our revival-seeking youth ministry where young people are coming to know Jesus Christ. Faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. Be blessed as you listen. How hungry are you for God? Jesus said, unless you eat me, you don't have life. He said, you have to eat me. In John chapter 6, he that eats my, he says that, then Jesus said, most assuredly I say unto you, unless you eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. But I'm alive, I'm not dead. Yeah, you're alive, but you're a dead man walking. He said, you have to eat me. And if you are not eating me, you don't have life. Jesus came so we can eat him. We can feed on him. In the verse 32, 33 to 35, actually 35 says that, I am the bread that came from heaven. I am the bread of life. There is bread of life and there's bread that becomes toilet. <laughs> People pay more money for it. But the bread of life, he said, come and buy without money. Isaiah chapter 55. He said, come to me, buy. He said, ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come, buy and eat. You're supposed to buy anyway. But it's not everything you buy with money. Buying means paying a price. You can't walk with Christ without a price. Wow. P-R-I-C-E, price. When you want to walk with Christ, you have to pay a price, but it might not be money in terms of money. You are buying bread without money, but you are still paying a price. until you are willing to pay a price, you can get the prize. P-R-I-Z-E. He said, Philippians chapter three, he said, one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, and I reach forward to the things which are ahead. There are things ahead. The good news is the things ahead are better than the things behind you. Amen. I don't know what you have been through in life, but I have good news for you. Your future is better. Amen. Tell someone, look at me very well. I have a better future. <laughs> Tell someone, I have a better future. <laughs> so don't judge me with my past. Why don't you start treating me based on my future? Because I have a glorious future. I have an amazing future. I'm actually a future star. If you haven't seen a, the beginning of a star, look at me. A star. He said, one thing I do, forgetting about the things that lie behind me. Forget about that boy. Forget about what happened. Forget about what the girl did. Forget about how they lied on you. Forget about those friends. Some of us, you can never enter a glorious future if you still keep those friends. Some of you have to just delete some pictures. Delete some messages. It will help you to forget. It will help you to forget. 
Forget about what happened to you, that bad thing that happened to you. Forget about it. How can, how can I forget? You, have, you don't have a choice. You can't go forward looking backwards. Wow. That's why in a, the car, every driving mirror is small. And the windscreen is big. So you can have the chance to look ahead. It's the one thing I do. It's the one thing I do. There's always be that one thing you must do to give you an upper hand in life. Else you'll be failing hands down. One thing I do. What's that one thing? He said, if I start by saying that, I do not count myself to have apprehended. That apprehended is like I have it in control. I have it in control. I have, I have all the degrees that I want. I've got my man. He said he'll marry me. <laughs> I've got a girl. She said yes to me. I've got it. He said, I, Paul said, it doesn't matter where I am. I do not count myself to have gotten it. One of the reasons why some people cannot be helped is because they think they've got it. They got it. They got it. I don't need anybody's help. You are very stupid if you say you don't need help. Everybody needs help. That means you always need somebody. You never know. Maybe the one that may help you best in life is the one sitting right next to you. You who don't regard anybody. You treat people based on their hairstyle. You treat people based on their money. You treat people based on their, where they live, their postcode. You treat people based on their car. You treat people based on their background. You are making a big mistake. But thank God, the future is always ahead. No one has seen the future yet. There's no scientific apparatus that will make you see the future. All those movies, Back to the Future, it's, 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 it's a movie, it's acting, it's not real. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, it said, No eye has seen, nor ear heard, neither has it entered the heart of any man. Uh, uh, but he said he will marry me. He said, I'm always on his heart. That's different. What God has prepared for your future has not entered the heart of a man. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So whatever he's telling you on his heart is not what God has for you. Wow. Neither has he entered the heart of man. The things which God has prepared. God himself has prepared some amazing things for people who love him. You cannot afford not to love God. You are wasting your life. No, but I, I, I'm not wasting. You are, I'm telling you, you are wasting your life. So he says that neither has he entered the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. You can't afford not to love God. You are wasting away. You are wasting away. White towels always get dirty. And you know, when do you normally use towel? After you wash. So towel shouldn't be dirty. But when you go to hotels, I've traveled, I've been in a lot of hotels. I'm here to see one hotel that has different color towel. It's always white. If I go to any hotel and it's not white, even if it's light pink, I won't use it. <laughs> I can't use a towel that's not white. Why, Pastor, why, why do you like t- uh, white towels? It helps me to know that I'm dust. Wow. After I wash, after I've washed and scrubbed my body, still this death never leaves. Wow. That means I need Jesus. Yeah. I really need help. Yeah. I really need help. I've done everything, but something, my taste is not getting, letting me go. Mm. I like too much mess. And some of us, alcohol. Girls. Boys. Don't worry, that's why we are all here. Yes. Everybody needs help one way or the other. You saw somebody else, you asked, what are you doing here? You too, what are you doing here? Yes. <laughs> Everybody needs help. Even the purest of men needs help. Everybody needs help. So, what does it mean to need help? It means that you need to be saved. 
Save me from myself. Save me from this, my messy life. It looks like I'm having fun. But afterwards, I still feel empty. I feel empty. There are people sitting here who feel very empty. The greatest philosophical question ever, everywhere amongst human beings, is who am I? Yeah. Who am I? Some of you have been asking that question. Always. So, why am I here? Who am I? Yeah. Who am I? What is my life? So what's the meaning of life? Yeah. When you are becoming aware of yourself, one of the things that you ask is, who am I? Yeah. Yeah. Who am I and what is my life? And sometimes when you begin to ask that question, you realize that something is still missing. Life can be so empty. How many of you have felt that before? Life is empty. Sometimes you really feel it at a funeral. When you're, when you're a very good friend or your classmate or somebody dies, suddenly you feel, so what's the point in life? And at a funeral, you never understand the meaning of life. That's why it's good to go to funeral sometimes. The Bible says that the house, the, the, the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. Yeah. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. But the heart of the fool is where there's party. Yeah, he likes revving and party. <laughs> That's all you are thinking about. The heart of the wise is in the house of Morning, when people are crying, it makes you do a soul search, deep thinking. But the heart of the of fools is in the house of change. It give me a different translation. Yeah, pleasure. NLT. Let's already out. Let's go. A wise person thinks a lot about death. Did you see that? Yes. Read it again. A wise person thinks a lot about death. A foolish person doesn't think about death. Meanwhile, you will die. How many of you know young people who have died before? Young people. Oh, so death is not for only 96 years old queen. Death is for everybody. Everyone. Some people die at the age of two. Some of you have friends who died recently. I mean, how you die is different. It's going to be different. Sometimes through stabbing, through sickness, through cancer, through accident. Anybody at all can die at any time. Because it's appointed unto man once to die. You will die one day. Yeah. I pray that not now. Amen. Say a better amen. amen. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I made a mistake. Not everybody wants that. So those who don't, are not ready to die now, now say amen. amen. It's been recorded in the spirit too. Yeah. Amen. So. <laughs> Yeah, death comes to everybody. The heart of the wise, it says that a wise person thinks a lot about death while a fool thinks only, thinks only about having a good time. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> it says a foolish person. The fool only th th thinks only about having a good time. Those who say, I, I, I want to be happy. They say, life is not about happiness. Life is not about happiness. Life is about purpose. You will never be happy without purpose. You will always feel empty. It doesn't matter how much you get. You always feel empty. Empty. There have been celebrities who take their lives. Yeah. How, how, how could that be? Wow. You wish you have a culture of his life, yeah. but he doesn't like it, takes it because he's very empty. Mm -hmm. I, I want to tell you, many celebrities are empty. Yeah. There's a guy, a celebrity, big guy, internationally known, everywhere, when he goes, people, hey! <laughs> he told me sometimes, this is about five years ago, he's, his best friend told me, and he himself told me, his best friend told me that the guy is so miserable. Sometimes, after every show, he goes behind the stage. When he, he was crying. He's crying. He's confused. 
people are shouting. Bless you. I like it. You can gain the whole world. But that doesn't mean your soul is safe. Message Bible. How does he put that scripture? Message Bible. Proverbs. Is it Proverbs or Ecclesiastes? Ecclesiastes 7 4. Let's read it. A lot of people who don't pass exam is because of fun and games. I actually, you know what? I actually don't understand people who are students but are not studying. Think about it. You are a student, but you are not studying. What a foolish student this was. Pastor, why are you saying that? Because someone must tell you you are foolish. Because it must be said so hard that you'd never want to be in that category. Yeah. No eye has seen, no ear heard, neither has it entered the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. Paul said, one thing I do, one thing I do, someone say one thing. One thing I do. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward. Give us NLT. Let's see how, if it puts it in it. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. But I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. That's why we are here. That's why I like KP2. Paul said, I press on to verse, the next verse, verse 14. I press, say I press. I press. Life is about pressing. Mm-hmm. You have to keep pressing. If you have failed exam before, press. If you applied for something, a school, uni, something they didn't give you, press. You are not permitted to fold your arms and sit down and say, I'm tired. That's a failure, talking. All the potentials loaded in, in you will be able to empower you to press. And if you press, you are likely to make it. Many people, the press, are, the press is not interested in people who don't press. <laughs> so you have to press. And you make news. He said, I press... Towards, that means you must have a vision. You must have a target. Every young lady here must have a vision in life. One of the biggest and the glorious visions you can have is to be a strong woman of God. Yes. Every man here don't want to be, don't never have a, it's such a stupid vision to be ladies' man. What, would you, what are you going to do with that? So, your biggest vision must be that you will fulfill your assignments in life. Yeah. Everybody has an assignment. That's the only reason why you are alive. Wow. The only reason why I'm telling you, you won't learn that in school, but you learn that in God. The only reason why you are alive is because there's an assignment to your life. That's why it doesn't matter how wrong you go, thank God for our laws that you cannot be killed. You cannot be executed. No one is permitted in under our laws because of the influence of the Bible in the laws of United Kingdom. Right. We don't allow anyone to be killed or to be executed. We don't allow it. They used to do that, but thank God for the influence of the Bible. Why? Because there is hope for everybody. Yes, as long as you are alive, there is an assignment for your life. And it's your job to look for it wow. and fulfill it. However, there are many who are walking like headless chicken. All they want to do is buy trainers, track sheets. Some of the ladies, it's just hair and makeup. If all there is to you is body, you will be nobody. (laughs) 
You end up being nobody in life if all there is to you is body. I think it's a tweetable one, isn't it? Yes. You must have a vision. So sometimes when things go bad for you, your vision keeps you going. You press. You might lose loved ones, but you can press on. You, must, you, 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 you might lose money, but you press on. You might lose friends, but you press on. The only thing you can lose and press on is when you lose God. Wow. When you lose God, you are pressing to nowhere. You are lost. You are, thank you, sir. You are like somebody beating the air. Have you, have you ever been in the dark and someone is fighting, you can't see anything, you are trying to beat them? You are trying to catch the air. Catch the air. There's no vision in your life and there's no God. There's God, but you, have, you don't have vision, you have ambition. There's a difference between vision and ambition. Vision comes from God. Ambition comes from self. Ambition. You are beating the air. Today I submit to you. Why do you keep yourself lost? Many people are trying to... <laughs> All right, let me put it this way. Everybody has got a void. Everybody has got a void inside you. It's not a medical void, but your soul, you feel it. You feel empty. Sometimes you feel angry. Sometimes you feel confused. Sometimes you feel, what's the purpose? Why am I here? Yeah. Are, that's why people even feel suicidal. That's right. Because the void grows so big, you feel like, what's the point of my life? I'll have to end it all. That's why people feel suicidal. Suicidal because it's void. So everybody has got a void. And the void, people are using, trying different means to fill that void. Yes. Different means. Some are going for pleasure. Mm. How many of you have had a very wild, some of you are young, so you might not. Wild weekend. Partying. What? <laughs> Partying and as far as you can go. Yeah. Drinking and girls or smoking and boys and wow, drunk. And afterwards, you're wondering, why, what's wrong with you? There's something wrong, something is, how many of you have ever experienced that before? People try to fill that void with pleasure. Party after party, party after party. It only leaves you with wasted days. A weekend you spend partying around is a wasted, a wasted weekend. Wow. So people try to fill the void by going for pleasure. Others try to fill the void by going for power. Power. I'm in charge. I'm part of the gang. I'm a gang head leader. Everybody fears me when I speak. But so, do you know many gang Leaders or gangsters are very poor, empty. Yeah. Yeah. Some join the gangs because they feel a void. They want a place where they feel accepted. Yeah. It's not that you are a bad person. Not that you are stupid. You are not. Some of you know you are very brilliant and intelligent. Yeah. You are very smart. But the void makes you look like a fool. The void makes you use your name to do big. You open an account so they can transfer money into your account. Yeah, yeah. Fraud money into your account. Yeah, yeah. And you are blacklisted. Yeah. And you are too smart. Sometimes you are wondering, how come I did this thing? Void. It's a void. It's a void. That is why I will be very, I will be very stupid, unfair to point fingers at you and judge you. People do all kinds of things, not because they are bad, but because of the void. I'm talking about the void. You got to do something about the void. The void. The void. Every human being was born with a void. So that's why in spite of all the things your dad has done, be careful when you are throwing stones at him. Because he has a big void. 
And sometimes people never grow out of it. Because that void, you don't grow out of it. It must be filled. People die early and they meet their grave early. And the, what is sad is, and then after that you go to hell? That void will send you to hell. That void will send you to hell. He said, for the son of man did not come to condemn. He came that the world through him will be saved. Everybody has got a void. Everybody. Religious people don't understand it. So religious people will tell you, you have to do this. You have to take this post. You have to be a good person. You have to be, but you've tried it and it's not working. You try to be good. But the more you are trying, the badder you become. <laughs> if I can use that word. The badder, like the pressure is getting. The more you are trying. I'm trying, don't you see? I'm, tr I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm trying. I don't know what's wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with you. Just that there's a big void. And you are trying to sort that void out without getting it filled. You are born that way. You are born. Everyone came deformed with a void. So th that's. Jesus puts it this way. What, do you, what does a man gain? If you gain, Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. For what profit is it to a man? That man there is not a male. It's not a male. It's to a human being. What profit is it to a human being? If he gains the whole world, but you lose your soul. That's where the void is. That's where the void is. You are getting money. You are getting friends. You are, some people try to fill the void by looking for prestige. So I want to buy designer wear. Some look for, to fill the void via, as I said, um, power, pleasure, prestige. Others look for it via possessions. I have this, I have this, I have this, I have that, I have that, I have that, until you don't have peace. Mm. You have everything but peace. Mm. Everything you own, your TV is smart. Your cooker is smart. <laughs> your phone is smart. <laughs> your watch is smart watch. Your brain smart. is not smart. <laughs> <laughs> Everything you own is smart, but where, what, everything you are is dumb. It's not smart. Why? Because of the void. Because of the void. Some of you ladies looking at me, you like boys so much. It's chronic. It's pathetic. It's pathetic. Unless a guy doesn't pass by and say, then you are following. It's pathetic. But it's not because you are stupid. It's because there's a void. There's a void. Please, don't, don't, let's, let's stop condemning people. Stop writing people off. It's the void that is responsible. Wow. Some of you are not happy. Mm. You've tried everything to make you happy. But you can't be happy. Why? The void. The void. The problem is not you. The problem is the void inside you. And the void becomes a hiding place for demons. Mm. It's, it's like demons are squatting mm. in your life. That's why you can't, you addict, addiction is a sign that some demons are squatting. Yeah. Addiction is a sign. Because you don't want to do it. Something is controlling you. It's something stronger than you. And unfortunately, the thing is not from outside. It's inside you. It's inside you. The, if the problem is outside, at least you can buy some. The, when the weather is cold, you can cover up. Because the weather, the cold is from outside. 
But if the problem is inside, Cedric can take it out. You know I'm describing exactly what has been going on in your life. Because God sent me to you. You have been looking for. It feels like sometimes you are standing in the desert alone. And sometimes your life is just spinning out of control. You feel like you've tried. You've tried everything. Sometimes people don't understand why you burst into all kinds of tantrums. Some of you are very quiet and gentle, but there's so much you are internalizing. Because life is asking you a question you have never been able to answer. Life is putting a demand on you and you don't have what it takes to answer. And you are learning to adjust, but you never are able to adjust because of the void. Watch this, watch this. He said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? So you can actually gain. You can gain physically. What it looks like you have arrived, you have it. But actually you are still lost. Because the void, the void is deeper than what can be seen. It's deeper than what people can appreciate. It's deeper than what people can give to you. It's deeper than what you can gain. It's deeper than how you, how you feel with, around people. But when they are gone, it's now you. The thing is so you that nobody can help you. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but his soul? Or what will a person give in exchange for his soul? Nothing is more valuable than you. Nothing in your life is more valuable than you. Girl, just kick that boy out. Boy, kick the girl out. You are using her thinking that it will fill the void. It's not working. You are using him thinking to fill the void. It's not working. You've tried everything. Academically, it seems like you are doing well. You are actually even doing well till this void got you distracted. You were the best in your class. But this void distracted you. Started following some guys. Started following the wrong crowd. You ended up in prison. And still the void. Sometimes when you are quiet, that's why you have avoided church. Because there's something when you come to church, it makes you feel, I'm very lost, I need help. But you want to put up a front to look like I'm fine. I'm fine, I'm fine. People who tell you that they are fine, they are fine. Really, most of the time, they are not fine. Most people, there's a difference between bold face, bold face and boldness. When the lion comes, if you have boldness, say, let him come. But there are people who say, oh, let him come. And they see us, ah! spider alone. Make sure you <laughs> So human beings, we are, you know, we are vulnerable. The point I'm making is there's a void. And I know you can't deny it. If you deny it, you are not living in reality. Come on. Today, I want to talk to somebody a language you can understand. Because the, the void is eating you up. It's eating you up. I used to be like that. I was even in church. I was in church. I've never been with a woman. I've never drank alcohol. I've never been to a nightclub. I've ne- never. I was in church. It must ever. But I wasn't in Christ. So the void, sometimes I'll be sitting in the church and I could feel, I need help. I need, I, I, something is missing. I didn't know what it was, but I knew something is missing. That's what the Bible says, that you can gain the whole world and lose your soul. That missing piece is the void that's making you lose you. Mark chapter 8, verse 36. Mark chapter 8 says that. For what will it profit, profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Verse 37. 
Or what will a person, that man there is not a male, okay? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? I don't understand someone who will run away from church to go into the world. You are giving up the, the only means to fill the void. You're giving it up for the world. What are you giving in it? What can you give that is worth it at the expense of your soul? I want you to do church. It will help you. Because that void will never leave. We don't want to hear one day he has taken his life. That's what happens to a lot of ladies, rather. She has taken her life. Yes, she's one to overdose. We don't, how, how did you come to church and you had, you were so close. You are so close by. How can you be in the desert? And you get to Oasis, the Oasis, and water right in front of you, and you die through dehydration. You die out of test. How can you die out of test in front of a fresh water body? Wow. Who should be blamed? You. That one, you can't blame anybody. You, if you, if you set your foot in church and you hear about Christ and you dump him and you die a miserable death or you end with the void, you can't blame anybody. And when you face your maker, Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die and after death, judgment. Yes. Yeah, judgment is coming. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. After death, judgment. And in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10, it says that for we must all appear. <laughs> Woo! Including the bishop and the pastor. Okay. Okay. The one preaching will also appear. People who are do, doing church and are dodgy life, they will appear. Okay. They will appear. Nobody is, is immune from appearing before the judgment seat. We must, we, it's a must, say must. must. Say must. must. We, we must all, not only some of us, we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. It's a judgment seat. Mm. That each one, not groups, we don't go in groups. You will speak for yourself. Mm. Each one, each one may receive the things done in his body. No, oh, but you know, God knows my heart is right. I'm doing bad things, but he knows my heart. Listen, it's what you are doing, it's not what is in your heart that you'll be judged with. You will not be judged based on what is in your heart. You'll be judged based on what you have done. Okay. There. That's it. Things done, not things wished. Mm. Wow. Things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. What is it that you are doing? People don't know. Oh. The judgment day is coming. Yeah. Ah, Pastor, I'm scared. I'm glad you are scared. <laughs> because someone needs to scare you to not stand in the way where the car will knock you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You are standing on the tracks. The train is coming seven miles away. Someone needs to tell you, hey, a lion is about to eat all your eyes. <laughs> Our train is about to kill you. You're about to die. Hey! At least, per adventure, if it will make you jump out of the tracks, it's better yes, sir. than for you to stand there nonchalantly. Que sera, sera. Whatever will happen, let it happen. No. No. It's appointed unto man wants to die. We shall all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, let me end by saying this. What, so what should I do? I came to paint the picture of everybody for you. You think others are better than you? No. They may look better, but they are not better. If their blood is not gold, they are not better. If their blood is red, if they have Red blood cells and white blood cells. They have hemoglobin, right? Yeah. They are not different from you. They are not different from you. We all 
need a, make, a, a helper. We all need the help of God. Because the Bible says, for all have sinned. And we are sh- we're falling short of the glory of God. That is what brings the void. Sin, sin, sin creates a void in your life. Sin creates a void in your life. So some of us, you are trying to fill the void, but you are sinning more. So the void is getting accentuated or is getting worse and worse and worse and worse. But I have good news. How should I fill the void? Did you see what we just read? It says that um, in, in, I don't know whether I should go to Matthew or Mark. Okay, let's go to the Mark one, chapter 8. I just quoted Mark chapter 8, verse 20, uh, 36, right? In fact, when you look at the verse 34, look at verse 34 and 35. He says that when he had called the people to himself with his disciples also, he said unto them, what, whoever desired to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. There's some cross taken here. Deny yourself, take up. Look at the next verse. Why? For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life, watch this, for my sake. Whoever loses his life for my sake, and not only me, for the gospel preaching, will what you will save your life. Ah, so then to save your life, you need to lose it for Jesus. The only way that void can be filled is when Jesus takes over. He is the only water of life. That's why I started by saying that Jesus said, if you don't eat me, anyone who does not eat me does not have life. You seem to be having fun, but you are still void. You don't have life. So we are talking about what should I do to be saved? I need, I need this salvation. You are not the first person asking this question. In fact, you've always been asking, but you didn't know that it's actually salvation you need. You've been thinking, oh, something is missing. I'm not happy. I'm sad. I'm not happy. I'm stressed. I'm very angry. I'm not myself and all that. I'm stressed. I, I, I have, I'm, I'm, I have uh, anxiety. So all those, it's all one thing. It's a void that is responsible for that. Satan can never oppress you until he has depressed you. The more you feel emotionally depressed, the more Satan is getting closer and taking control. Have you ever seen someone who has ended their life without being first depressed? You're depressed. Sense of hopelessness. Satan will, it's a barrage of attacks bombarding you. And it gets worse after you have tried all the things that are supposed to, are supposed to give you pleasure. That some of the things he offers as pleasure is actually meant to move you further from God. And the further you go from God, the we- let me use the word, the worse it becomes. The larger the void. Many, many people who you think are happy are sad. Many people, they are living in posh houses but they are sad. The void people were feeling 800 years ago is the same with human beings. 800 years ago, how did they make babies? It hasn't changed. Two, three thousand years ago, if you drank poison or a snake bites you, you would die. Now, if a snake bites you, what happens? You will still die. It hasn't changed. 4,000 years ago, it takes a man and a woman to have a baby, to have a child. 4,000 years down the line, it hasn't still changed. The same human nature hasn't changed. Technology can change, but human nature hasn't changed. So, how to fill the void? Salvation. The only way to fill is to be saved. Listen, you are not the only one asking So what can I do? People have been asking this question for many years. There was a man called John the Baptist. He was preaching. In Luke chapter 3, verse 10, 
In Luke chapter 3, verse 12, in Luke chapter 3, verse 14, they were asking, what shall we do? I know you're asking a question, what shall I do? This void is there, I know. I had not trouble with you, what shall I do? Luke chapter 3, verse 10, look at it. Luke chapter 3. So, so the people ask him, saying, what shall we do then? You are not the first one to be thinking this question. Look at verse 12. Verse 12. Then tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, teacher, what shall we do? Tax collectors were the bad guys in town. They did dodgy, fraud, fraudulent deals. The bad guys, they also came. So if you're one of the bad guys, Jesus actually likes the bad guys if they come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they will call you bad, but everybody's All bad. Right. All right. Depends on what you have been doing. Yeah, if you are breaking law, people will tell you, say it's bad. But they are also breaking God's law. So, as for, so long as God's law is concerned, all have sinned. Yeah. You don't have any parking fine because you don't have a car. <laughs> so when it comes to laws about parking, you will always claim innocence. So every law, or human law, somebody is innocent. Every human law. But when it comes to God's law, it catches all of us. 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 The good, bad, and the ugly. All of us. All of us. And so, they were asking. The tax collectors also came. They said, teacher. If it was me, they would say, Pastor David. They would have said, God's servant. What shall we do? Look at verse 14. Likewise, the soldiers ask him. Ah, soldiers are coming home. People were asking. Tax collectors were asking. Soldiers were also coming, saying, and what shall we do? What shall we do? So he said to them, do not intimidate anyone anymore. He gave them some What shall we do? People have been asking this question. Always. And I know you're asking. I know you're asking. That's why I'm going to show you what to do. Peter was preaching one day. In Acts chapter 2, verse 37. Bible said, and when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they said, men and brethren, what shall we do? What shall we do? Every good preaching is meant to bring you to that place where you ask, what shall I do? What shall we do? Good preaching. God-filled preaching brings you into stark reality of the void. And that is not condemnation. That is awakening. That is opening your eyes to realize that actually it's a void. What shall I do? What shall we do? Every preaching must make you feel, what shall I do? What should I do? So in Acts chapter 2, verse 37, they ask, Brendan and brethren, what shall we do? In Acts chapter 22, verse 10, Paul, he was Saul. He was killing the believers. He met God. He met Jesus. And he said, so I said, what shall I do, Lord? Have you seen people always asking this question? The disciples of Jesus put it this way in John chapter 6, verse 28. They said, what must we do to work the works of God? What must I do? What must I do? Is there something I can do? But I want to take you back to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verse 30, 31. 30 says that Jailer said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? You want to be saved? It's simple. Look at the next verse. They said to him, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Not behave. Start with believing. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be saved. Not only you. You and the people are connected to you. Your family guys will be saved. Some of you, what is going on in your family is not good. Your family needs a lot of help. But that's why God wants to start with you. God wants to start with you. We are offering you salvation. You are telling me, how about the gospel according to Thomas? <laughs> when you were researching about the gospel according to Thomas, what has it done for you? Mm. Your void still remains. Yeah. Yeah. Your mess, you are still addicted. Mm-hmm. Drop the nonsense and look for help. Yeah. Get out of that arrogance because you still need help. You come to church, you are bringing this nonsense racial stuff. Black, black. The, Jesus is a black man. Who cares? Who cares? At least be a bit sensible and check history. Check history. The Jews, are they blacks? They are, they are, they are not blacks. And they are not Asians. 
Neither are they Germans. They are not Russians. Moses was not a Russian. <laughs> Peter was not German. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, certainly was never Irish. So why, why, where from all this white man, black man, black man? It's not a racial thing, it's a God thing. Yeah. They, I'm, listen, listen, don't clap. I, I, my time. I'm more concerned about the void in your life. Wow. That is driving you mad. That is driving you to hell. That is ruining your life. Wait till you, you are in control of your life before you talk the way you talk. You're out of control. And instead of looking for help, Satan has managed to tell you, uh, don't believe the Bible. Don't believe all uh, those pastors. They want your money. Uh, how much have you got? You don't even have some. Your account is in red. Hey. And you are, you are scrum, they need my money. You, you would have gone around Bill Gates. But did you see there, Pastor Esther, did you buy for him? Yeah. Did you buy for him? Have you even bought one? Why are people so Blind. The question is, what you going to do about your mess? Mm. Let's, let's cut to the chase. That's why I'm here. Not because of time. Not because of race. Mm. What you going to do about this lack of control in your life? I think you need help. Yeah. Just as I need help. Yeah. Just as he needs help. Mm. We all need help. Yes. We are all sinking. And there's only one help. The people ask, what shall I do to be saved? He said, believe in Jesus. Yes. I don't believe, go to hell. Next, believe in Jesus. Yes, I believe. Be saved. Hallelujah. Believe in Jesus. Next, believe in uh, uh, I don't really know if I can believe or not. Go to hell. Next. Yes. Time, you're running out of time. Yes. Wow. You're running out of time. You're running out of time. We're running out of time. We're running out of time. The time has come. And now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. As I bring the message to a close, I know God sent me to you because you can't die in your sins and you can't stay in the void. There is a solution. What does it profit a man? If he gains the whole world and loses his soul, that will not be your story. Amen. Your story will be you find your soul Amen. and you find rest. Jesus puts it this way Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Come unto me. Come. Come. Uh, uh, he said, Come unto me. Oh, ye. Everybody, it doesn't matter. You can be a Buddhist, you can be Hindu, you can be Catholic, you can be tongue talking. You can be redeemed. You can redeem. You can be black. You can be white. It doesn't matter. He said, come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. You feel there's this big burden on your life. You are tired. Are you tired? Say, like, I'm tired. I need help. I need help. I can't stop. Something is wrong in my life. And sometimes I'm tired of living. He said, come. He said, come. Come unto me. He just said, come unto me. Keep Jesus, not a pastor. No pastor can help you. No pastor can help you. It's Jesus. Come unto me, all ye who labor and are heavy laden. And he said, me, I will give you rest. Amen. I'll give you rest. I'll give you rest. Can I ask you a question? What don't you understand? What don't you understand about that statement? What don't you understand? But Pastor, I have so many questions. Please, let's start with what you can understand and what can help you. When you started uni, didn't you have many questions about all these big, big, big courses? You start from somewhere. You, didn't you start with A for apple, A, A, apple, B for boy, bo, bo, boy, C for chango, cha, cha. <laughs> And today, look, you are, you are cracking calculus. Wow. You don't understand everything at once. Start from where you are 
and humble yourself, embrace the first solution, and that will entitle you to the next solution. That will entitle you to the next solution. You haven't done a degree. No, a post a, a undergrad, you haven't done it. And now you want to go and do PhD. Does it work like that? No. no. I know you want to be a PhD holder, but they will start you with all levels. All levels, I mean all levels. GCSE. Yeah. Sorry. He said, okay, yeah. This GCSE. Or A level. Or A level. Yeah. Right? Yeah. GCSE or A level. You have to go. It must be systematic. So, Pastor, what I'm trying to say, I want to give you a solution to the question you've been asking. What can I do? What can I do? And the solution is biblical. I don't have an answer for you, but the Bible has got it for you. So Satan to keep, for Satan to keep you in bondage, he will tell you, don't believe in it. Don't believe in it. If you don't believe in the Bible, I can't help you. Go away. Wow. Let me tell you, let me say as blood, I can't help you. Get out of here. Yeah. Yeah. And when you go, don't come. Yeah. <laughs> because I can't help you. I can't help you. And you will die in your sins. Mm -hmm. And when you die, it's not the end of it. You will burn in hell. Wow. When you are burning, ask, oh, what about the gospel of Thomas? Be <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For all have sinned and have fallen short of the God. Nobody is perfect. Nobody has gotten it all together. The only one who is perfect is the one who can come inside you and fill the void. Pleasure cannot take care of the void. Power cannot take care of the void. Prestige cannot take care of the void. Possessions cannot take care of the void. There's only one thing that can take care of the void. Jesus. Jesus. God bless you for listening to the amazing message. We pray your life can never be the same. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carriage Church on YouTube and to listen to more messages from David Entry on all relevant streaming platforms. You can also connect with David Entry and our youth ministry on social media. Find David Entry on Instagram and TikTok at davidentry underscore and find our youth ministry at Caris Phase 2 on Instagram and TikTok and at Caris on Campus on Snapchat. Be blessed.